I'm going to practice decision making for Hong Kong Mahjong. This is kind of the ground level game for all Mahjong, except for American style. Four sets and a pair, that's what you need. The sets can be three in a sequence or three of a kind. Since there are four of every tile, you can have four of a kind. Respectively, those are called Chow, Pung, and Kong. If you wanna know more about this version, there's a link below the video to a lesson playlist. There's also a link to this player reference card. It's got set up on the back and it's got the scoring in the middle, including a legend so that you can learn the crack suit because the bams and dots are pretty easy. In this exercise, I'm going to do what I call random pulls. This is where I draw 14 tiles if I'm the dealer and 13 if I'm non-dealer. And I try to figure out what kind of scoring I could go for. Normally when I play, there's a point minimum or a fawn minimum, a fawn is point. So let's say that for these random pulls, I need to have three fawn in order to win. The reason I like to do random pulls is it gives me an opportunity to practice decision making when I first get my drawn tiles. A lot of times there's a point minimum or a fawn minimum and you have to have some scoring in your hand in order to qualify to win. These exercises help build my confidence. If you have a set at home, give it a try yourself and let me know if it helps you with your confidence level. If you don't have a set yet, there's a link below the video to where you could get one. When you play Hong Kong Mahjong, there are four rounds where each player gets to be the dealer for each of the rounds. The first round is East round. Then we have South, West, and North. So we're gonna start with the East round. That'll be our first random pull. And then I'm going to roll dice to randomize which seat we're in. That's not actually part of the game. Oops. Okay. I'm also gonna roll dice to randomize where we're seated. This is not really part of the game. It's just for the exercise because you're in a different seat as you play. And depending on where you're seated and what the wind of the round is, that can help you find score for your hand. And I'll explain that as we go. So I'm gonna roll. I rolled a nine. If you count around the table beginning here, one, two, three, et cetera, et cetera, this would be nine. So we're going to be the dealer, which is east. So we're gonna be in east seat and it is east round. As the dealer, you get 14 tiles. So I'm gonna take 14 random tiles. Look at all those cracks. This is the crack suit. We have bams and dots here. I would play what's called a half flush. We only have three discards, which is really good, actually. Let me make sure we have the right number of tiles. Yes. Okay, so I would play a half flush. Cracks with winds and dragons. So as single winds and dragons here, we're not gonna be able to do much there. For those um, as singles, we'll have to pair them up in order to pung, which is a three of a kind. So like this, that's a three of a kind. That's called a pung. So we would need to pair these up so that we could be ready to pung. If someone were to discard, for example, a south, we could say pung if we had two of them. As a single, it's gonna do us no good. So we would need to pair those up this is isolated. This is a pair, so we could potentially pung that. This is already a pung, and this is a pair, which could be a pung. So I would play half flush, and then probably all pung. If I, if I get a seven or a nine, I could maybe even do a chow, which again is a three in a sequence. But these, I would toss. That's what I would do here, half flush. 
That is a three fawn hand. All pung is also three fawn. So if we did all pung and half flesh, this would be six fawn, which is a really good score. So now we're gonna do south round. And this time I rolled a seven. Seven would be west. So I'm gonna put a three on the dice. So we're in west seat and it's south round. We're non-dealer. So this time we're only gonna get 13 tiles. Thirteen. We're in west seat. It's south round. If we get a pung of west, that's our seat wind, we would get score for that. One fawn. Any pung of dragons is worth a fawn. So we would need to pair up in order to get score out of these. We have two pair in here, bams and dots. I think what I would do here is I would try to play all pung. I probably would keep the bams because we have one bams. Ones and nines are also considered part of the honor suit, which are made up of winds and dragons, and they can bring greater score. So that's why I would maybe focus on bams more so than dots. I would throw the five crack first, hold the threes because they're a pair. If we get more pairs, we could do all pung, which is three of a kind. Then depending on what happened, whether we paired up or whether we drew in bams, I would sacrifice the dots, including the pair. So hold this as long as possible. Try to draw in bams and honors or pair up and play all pung. So we're kind of in between, half flush, all pung. Either way, those are both worth three fawn, which would make the minimum. Single honors, again, don't help as singles. We would need to pair up so we could pung. I rolled a six. Six is south. So this time we are in south seat and now it is west round. Here we have a bonus tile, flowers. This is a one flower and we're in seat two, so this is not gonna help with score. If we were to have a two flower, we would get score for that. We're seat two, which is south. For this set of tiles, I would try for half flesh, but I would also hold these nines because again, we have lots of honors and we do have three terminals. So I would hold these, discard these first. Try for a half flush with dots and honors. Maybe play all honors and terminals depending on how the drawing goes. These would go last if I drew in dots. I think half flush is a nice scoring hand and I think it's pretty easy to get especially if you can pair these up or draw in your suit. So you'd have to wait and see during pick and discard phase of the game as to which way to go. If I drew in honors and nines, ones and nines, let's say, I would switch to all honors. If I drew in dots, I'd play half flesh. You, you might think, well, why not play with chows? If you mix two suits with chows, all chow is only one fawn. You would drive your score down by three by mixing suits and chows. 
if you do all pung, all three of a kind in mixed suits, that's okay because all pung is three fawn. Okay, we are now going to do north round. This is the last one. This time we're going to be in seat four. So that was easy. We're in seat four. We've got our bonus tile. This is a flower, a four flower. So we're going to get score for that. We'll get one fawn for that alone. For this set of tiles, I would try for the same thing as before. I would hold the terminals because we have all these dragons here. We'd have to pair them up because as singles, they're not going to help with only one exception. There's a hand called 13 orphans. It's one of each of the dragons, one of each of the winds of which we have none, and then one of each of the ones and nines with any tile paired. So there is a remote chance of that hand here. So I would hold these in hopes of getting that hand. That's the highest scoring hand you can get. There's a couple others, but 13 orphans is a sought after hand. And there's the makings of 13 orphans here. That's a 10 fawn hand. I would discard these first and go for it. You have to really be careful when you play a big hand. You've got to make sure that you know who you're playing with because there are people who go for the quickest win and usually that's going to be a low score hand. Low score, quick win. If players do that, a lot of times many small hands can win the night because big hands take time to build and they're not uh, as common as small hands. So the ending score can be varied. So be very careful and know who you're playing with and also know the point minimum. And if your hand is set up, go for it. If you don't go for it, you'll never win those big, rare hands. Glory. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next set of random pulls for Hong Kong Mahjong, may all your picks be keepers.